this what is this search and how to go about it so that we can go ahead in a very nice fashion uh, whenever a scholar is enrolling for phd at that time he has to he or she has to write a research proposal and submit to the particular university or get it approved from the university then they have to give a presentation and based on that the guide is allocated once the guide is allocated then the actual work starts and then every 6 months on an average there is a rdc research doctoral committee which sits to actually approve the work done and the publication part is also checked in so this is the kind of research uh, part time research that is going on full time research is where the student has to attend the university on all days and he has a, he or she is having other duties also so there are two types of research scholars basically when they are joining for phd so research is here actually a systematic and orderly series of steps to be followed and finding out some new knowledge which must be reliable i am sad to say this but 80% of the research done in india i am not talking about other countries we will limit ourselves to india 80% of the research being done in india is basically not of adding any value to the society not to the business not to any individual also it is just adding to the degrees iska matlab hai ki sirf 20% jo research ho raha hai that is only actually credible research so we need to change this equation very fast so research is not accidental discovery that aap kuch aur dhoond rahe the kuch aur mil gaya it's not just data collection some people keep on collecting data but they never use that data so it is of no use if it's just data collection or you are just collecting different papers and then just searching out published research results so this is not research research is circular it should lead to many questions right questions should be the base of research that is when i am actually doing some research suppose i am talking about a topic suppose i am talking about a topic where my one of my scholars is working on a multimedia question answering system that means when you are searching on google for a particular topic what do you get how effective can it be made it is similar to search engine optimization but whenever we are talking about images the images limitation is there when you are searching some words you are not getting the particular word related meanings in form of images or when you search for images what are you getting so here when i am talking about that the problem should be very clear whether it is writing a research paper or pro- formulating a research problem the first thing that has to be clear is that why that research is required what is the problem that is existing so that problem statement has to be clearly defined the objective of the research similarly when they are writing a research paper what is the objective of the research paper should be very clear whether it is a review paper or is it actually a research paper the review paper and research paper there are some differences review paper is where you are just collecting the existing methods that have been uh, published by different scholars by different uh, academicians and you are trying to study it and find out the gaps so that is as good as a review paper whereas when you are going for a research paper you are going to propose a methodology or you are going to propose a algorithm or a system which will actually deal with this problem and try to give an alternative solution which can be beneficial to society and it can it should be on particular parameters right matlab aapka criteria clear hona chahiye ki is it going to increase your speed is it going to increase uh, the uh, complex is it going to uh, increase the uh, kind of search capacity accuracy is it going to uh, lead in reduction of time required for search so all these things are very important so these are the parameters that are to be cleared so these parameters need to be defined in your paper also so research as i said should lead to more questions right whenever you start asking questions you will get the answers so my according to me actually research objectives should be smart now what i defined by smart is s stands for specific that is specific research objective should be there sometimes research objectives are very broad in a research proposals also 
uh, we see that five to six objectives are written. Go for only two objectives, but they should be specific enough and they should be clearly mentioned. There should not be any ambiguity in the objectives. Two broad objectives also may lead to your research being uh, extended by a long duration. Because whenever your uh, work is being evaluated for submitting the thesis, at that time, <coughs> many of the parameters that are seen is that are the objectives uh, being met or not. So if your objectives are too much, you will not be able to complete it within a specific time period. So your time bound work would not be reflected. So specific is the first objective that research objective should be specific. Then they should be measurable. Measurable ka matlab hai ki there should be a clear distinction on how you will be measuring it. It should be in some units, in, in some parameters, etc. And that should be clearly evident. You should not have any kind of research objectives which cannot be measured. Right? Then comes achievable. Something that you think you can achieve. Suppose you are you are talking about some kind of a scientific research. You are putting some unachievable goal. You will be always in a loop. You will not be able to complete your work when, even if it is six years. And then slowly you will re, uh, lose interest in the topic and you will leave your work. So we don't want such research to happen. We want time-bound research, but proper research to happen. As I told you, what drives you to research, I'm not going on this. There are very few, uh, hardly 10 to 20 percent who actually do it for their uh, choice of research topic is there and they want to actually excel in research. That's why we are do they are doing it. Otherwise, 80 percent are just doing it for the sake of getting a promotion or respectability or somebody, nobody in the family has a doctor degree, so I should have a doctor degree. Whenever you're talking about the structure of a paper, of a research paper or a review paper. It should be title, abstract, keywords, introduction, related work, system model and problem statement. This can be optional also. Methods or solutions, simulations or experiments, conclusion, acknowledgement and references. Now, I would just like to start with the title portion. But before that, actually, there is never any limitation on the number of papers or number of pages a journal paper should have. Though some of the journals have a limitation that they, they have anywhere between 6 to 20, 25 pages. In a conference, because of the conference proceeding or the publication related problem, uh, they have 6 pages, 6 to 8 pages. After 8 pages, normally it is chargeable. In some places, in some conferences, they have their own rules which can have to be followed. So when you are actually presenting a conference paper, you have to be very careful regarding how many number of pages you are writing. Because if you have 20 pages and they are allowing only six pages free of charge in the conference registration charge, then for 14 pages, you will have to pay extra. So you'll have to think about that before you are going for this. Now, choosing a right title is very important. The title should be very specific, not too broad. I'll go on to this by discussing a particular paper, which I've already opened. It is uh, my paper only, which is currently submitted. It is in review process with Springer. So I've actually just uh, thought I should be highlighting that. The title should be substantially different from others. Don't try to copy the titles from the earlier papers because that will lead to a lot of problems in the plagiarism front. I'll be talking about plagiarism also if we get time in detail. Avoid general or big titles. Research on data mining. This is a very big title, a very broad title. It's a general title. Data mining is a very big field. There are many topics in that. In which topic you will be selecting, it depends upon that. So you have to go to a particular topic and particular subtopic if possible in the title some research on job assignment in cluster computing this is again not specific <coughs> sorry so avoid general or big titles now when you're going for abstract you're going to write a concise abstract now what an abstract is basically right many times uh, some people write two pages abstract abstract is a very concise statement of what you are supposed to present in the paper 
So use of abstract is for search purpose. If anybody wants to search, they should get your details. They should get the details of what your paper wants to say. If you're searching for a particular uh, keywords, you'll be getting the abstract and the paper from that. So abstract is just going to tell you it is just a summary of your paper. So sometimes what happens is that most of the uh, papers are not read in detail. All the sections of the paper are not read by the uh, audience. They just read the abstract. Then they decide whether to move forward or not. So if your abstract does not convey the right meaning, your paper would not be read. And when your paper is not being read, it would not be cited also in their references. So it's very important that you have to read the paper, you have to get the paper read by the audience and they have to cite you also in their next papers that they want to publish. So that will lead to your citation index going up and you your score would also go up in the academic performance index. So use, an abs use of an abstract should be very clear that you have to give readers a paper summary before getting into the details. Abstract should, should sell in, tell in one or two sentences a problem that the paper is going to discuss. The work that has been done up till now or method being used. Again, we would not be going for references here. So don't use the exact wordings from another paper because that would actually lead to plagiarism and you will have to refer any other paper, cite any other paper there. So that in the abstract citations are not preferred or allowed. And it should be original findings or achievements which you are going to talk about. So abstract should not have reference numbers and multiple paragraphs. So this is something that abstract should avoid. Keywords, this slide also will complete and then we'll again rejoin for the uh, session. The use of keywords is for database search and categorizing your work for editors to choose reviewers. And also if anybody is searching on the paper, they can get later the relevant content of your paper. So keywords should be specific. Don't keep it too many keywords. There should not be 10 to 12 keywords, hardly six to seven effective keywords should be there. So keywords must be specific and as a whole represent the main topic of your paper. Avoid using the words that are not in the main topic, that are not the main topic like calculus, simulation, because it makes it very broad and your paper would not, not be searched if you are uh, putting those keywords in that. So choosing a right set of keywords is very important. Right now I'll be in the same way. It has to be changed and you have to actually modify your wordings accordingly so that the introduction part can be taken care of. So when you're introdu uh, introducing the uh, details, you have to introduce uh, the brief background of the topic area. Suppose I'm talking about multimedia data mining then I should be writing about what is multimedia data mining in a brief, not the very basics. It may happen that the reader may not be knowing too much about it. So you are just giving a brief, brief background. Don't make it a typical lecture kind of series where you're going to give too many notes to your students. So keep it a brief background of one or two paragraphs, not more than that. And that two small paragraphs. Existing work which would lead to the importance or originality of the work. That means you have to give a background to see existing, this is available and this is what needs to be added. So you're just giving a background to the audience that this is what I'm going to do, which will add to the work that has already been done and it will be useful to the fraternity in general. Description of your problem and achievement or significance or brief methodology of work. So you're not going to discuss the entire new method that you're discussing, but you're just giving two, a few sentences about it. So this is what an introduction should contain. Now related, one important work which would be focusing upon is that related work in reference list. Now, once the introduction is over, normally there are a few sections, subsections, which you can include if you want in the introduction itself. But after that, you should be going on to the actual work that is related work and reference list. Now, related work because what has been done by the authors up till now, by different authors, mm -hmm. that you're just going to discuss in from your point of view, not from the author's point of view. So what the author has done 
that you have read that paper and you are preparing a crux from that and you are representing it over here it is your own interpretation of what the author has done see very important that related work should not be the same copy and paste from the paper that you are taking the related work it should be suppose a author has written about something then you are copying the same paragraph and pasting it in your uh, related work that would lead to direct uh, copy and paste that is plagiarism would go high so never do that you have to analyze it you have to interpret it and you have to put it in your own words and it should not be matching with the same words that have been used in your uh, related work reference that you have taken so proper selection of references is first required for which actually i say that whenever you are going to write a paper first you should have a good search mechanism you should search for a lot of papers and these papers should be reputed papers reputed papers what i mean is that it should be through very good uh, research scholars who have done good work whose citation index is very high uh, they should also be going for such kind of reputed publications where it has been worldwide accepted and those papers you should be referring and collecting it so when you're searching for the papers search according to it and collect year wise papers see one important mistake which most of the scholars are making while they are writing the related work and the references is that they are not focusing upon the year of which the reference is there so this is something which i would like to skip because this is a general thing which i have uh, listed for the research purpose but this is how scientific research should be conducted which is not being conducted in the way it should be conducted now <laughs> literature review again this is supposed to be followed during your literature review these are the steps which i have listed out define of the research topic compile and prioritize a list of keywords identify the sources of information uh, reading evaluating and analyzing all the works and identifying the relationship between the works in the literature it's very important that is to be done and uh, resources for lr this is very important that these are all the resources you should be using again you can go for uh, n number of resources from different journals also if it is authentic uh, journal and authentic papers you can be referred referring to now when i uh, this is what i would like to come to that when i am actually uh, this is the main part that i want to cover when i am selecting any paper as a reviewer or as a editor what do i look for in a paper so this is very important for researchers originality is the first thing what's new about the subject if there is nothing new then the comment would be that there is no novelty in the paper so this should not be accepted so there should be something being added in the paper right some different view should be given even if it's a review paper some new way of looking at the review should be there relevance to an extension of existing knowledge whether it is relevant to and is it ex ex extending any particular existing knowledge that is already present if it is not then it is not to be considered research methodology are the conclusions valid and objective whatever has been mentioned in the abstract the same thing has to be uh, coming out as results in the conclusion if they these both are not matching or in sync then there are more chances that there may be uh, reviews suggested you may need to may make major revisions on your paper or it may be rejected also clarity structure and quality of writing it includes uh, communication spellings grammatical mistakes uh, proper paragraph formation proper flow of the paper all these things are very important sound logical progression of argument that means you should have that flow very proper where it should seem logical and the reader should be reading each and every part of your paper currency of reference is very important compliance to editorial scope and objectives of the journal suppose if you are submitting it a multimedia related paper to something on ai it may not be accepted or something to chemistry it may not be accepted so it should be within the editorial scope that's very important so this is the selection criteria of the paper that we normally follow 
and of course the plagiarism should be as low as possible now i'm just not going into uh, depth into this but these are some of the sites where you can actually turn it in is the uh, major site from where you can get your plagiarism checked and uh, the plagiarism should be as less as possible some journals have a criteria of 15% some have 10% it should be below 10% or 15% uh, conferences accordingly have their own rules uh, depending upon where they are going to publish it but this is how the plagiarism is to be checked and it is to be maintained and uh, you can avoid plagiarism by attributing the references describing all the sources of information sometimes you are collecting the sources but you have not mentioned it you have not acknowledged the sources so that has to be done provide footnotes wherever required use quotation marks uh, self plagiarism also needs to be uh, mentioned because it happens that you are quoting your own previous paper you have to properly give the uh, plagiarism uh, you have to give self citation also over there so that it is clear that it has from this paper that you have taken it otherwise it can lead to again self plagiarism which is also equally not acceptable and obtain permission from use of published drawings or other illustrations like uh, river publishers i am actually editing a book so i have uh, received a particular figure which has been taken from some other publication and i was the author to uh, give the permission uh, letter of from that particular publisher so that it can be published in our uh, chapter so this is basically what is required so you can avoid plagiarism by all these steps there are many punishments which have been offered i am not going into that these are the citation styles that i was talking about very important these are not being followed by most of the scholars uh, apa mla chicago and council of uh, science editors documentation these four are the styles which are mostly preferred and uh, it should be as per the styles these are the styles i have mentioned here the example of that and accordingly it has to be followed but most of the research scholars are not knowing even the guides are not relieving it to the uh, uh, revealing it to the research scholars that this uh, are the styles that are to be followed so that is the reason why this literacy is a little bit less than what it should be there so uh, these are some of the sites where you can verify the ugc and scopus journals I'll show you my paper i'm just showing you this paper which is currently in the publication part with a springer publication now this is my paper as i told you that it is the title abstract the keywords are mentioned the keywords are not many it is just related to the topic then introduction is there which is moving into the pages now see the references are cited now these references should be cited properly otherwise it may lead to plagiarism high level of plagiarism and then you go there there is a literature review or literature survey wherein everything has been properly subsections have been given wherever required and it has been clearly mentioned with a particular flow diagrams are also given equations wherever possible are given are specified graphs are specified right this is the proposed methodology again the, there is one section of proposed met methodology here which has been specified and proposed methodology is given here so that is mentioned along with proper characteristics figures the implementation part algorithm everything is mentioned over here so this is a complete paper and then the graphical representation of this paper these results these new methods and compare it with the different parameters as i told you and then the conclusion very specific conclusion with all the point wise classification you can make it paragraph wise or point wise here our requirement for this journal was that they needed point wise classification conclusion part so we have given point wise and then the references are there so this is a complete paper which we have submitted and uh, we have got the acceptance so this is something which is in publication process 